This is the lesson on simplifying fractions, chapter 5, lesson 3, which begins on page 207. I'll remind you again, you should be in your textbook. You should be following along in your textbooks as you follow this video, copying any important vocabulary or examples that are in the textbook as notes, because I'm going to be saying a lot of things, but I'm not going to be writing a lot of things. Okay? Of course, take notes from the video as you please, but this lesson is about simplifying fractions. So let's first talk about what why we need to simplify fractions. Well, we need to simplify fractions because we have these things called equivalent fractions. And what are equivalent fractions? Equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value. Okay? They're fractions that give the same information using different numbers. So let me use this drawing as an example for you. What fraction of this drawing is shaded right now? One half, correct? Okay. Well, what if I took this same drawing and I now drew a line this way? Now, what fraction of this drawing is shaded? Two-fourths, right? Did I actually change how much of the drawing was shaded? No, I didn't. It's still the same amount. But the numbers have changed because the amount of pieces, the amount of equal pieces I have divided this into have changed. Okay? What if I do this now? Now, what fraction of the drawing is shaded? Four eighths. Have I changed how much of the picture I've shaded? No. What I've changed is how much I have divided it by. Okay? One more. Now, what fraction of the shape is shaded? Four, six, eight sixteenths, right? In none of these examples did I actually change how much green there was. Okay? There's the same amount of green as when it was one half, as when it was two fourths, to four eighths, or to eight sixteenths. Those are equivalent fractions. They give the same information, but they use different numbers. Okay? They give the same information, but they use different numbers because they're from, the divisions are different. Let me do that part again. These are called equivalent fractions. One half, two fourths, four eighths, eight sixteenths. Why? Well, they give the same information, but they use different numbers because depending on the instance, my figure was divided into a different number of equal parts. So one half and two fourths are the same. 1 4 eighths is the same and 8 sixteenths are the same because no matter what I did to my figure the same amount of green was shaded each time and that's what equivalent fractions are let's talk about equivalent fractions and how to make equivalent fractions by multiplying okay these are the same fractions I used before 1 half 2 fourths 4 eighths 8 sixteenths the ones with the drawing correct well how do I change by multiplying one half to two fourths and multiply by two. One times two is two, two times two is four. How did I turn two fourths into four eighths? I multiplied by two. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. How did I multiply how did I change four eighths to eight sixteenths? Multiplied by two. Four times two is eight, eight times two is sixteen. Okay? What's the lesson here is, in making equivalent fractions, all you got to do to make an equivalent fraction is pick a number and multiply both parts of that number by that, by that same thing. So for example, if I want, if I ask you, give me an equivalent fraction for one-fourth, just pick a number. Five, okay, let's multiply both parts of this fraction by five. What's one times five? Five. What's four times five? Twenty. Well, five over twenty, or five twentieths, is an equivalent fraction to one fourth. Let's do another one. What about creating an equivalent fraction for nine elevenths? Equivalent fraction for nine elevenths. Just pick a number. Ten. Okay. 
What's 9 times 10? 90. What's 11 times 10? 110. You just created an equivalent fraction for 9 elevenths. So creating, creating equivalent fractions is very simple. Because all you have to do is pick a number and multiply both parts of the fraction by that same number. That's all you have to do. Very, very easy to do. Equivalent fractions. All right, now let's talk about simplifying fractions. When you simplify a fraction, what you're doing is taking that fraction and writing it in simplest form. Go back to the equivalent fractions. Remember, there's more than one way to give the same information with a fraction using different numbers. Well, the simplest form is giving that information using the smallest numbers possible. Now, the way we take a fraction and we simplify it or put it into simplest form is to divide both parts of the fraction by the same number. It's very, very important. You have to divide. You can't do it by adding or subtracting. Okay? You can't do it by multiplying. When we write a fraction in simplest form, we have to divide by the same number on the top and on the bottom of the fraction. So let's take a look at a few examples, okay? All right. First here we have 4 eighths. I need to simplify 4 eighths. I need to write 4 eighths in simplest form. So I need to think about what can I divide both 4 and 8 by that's the same. Well, the best way to do this and the quickest and easiest way to do this is using the greatest common factor. So I think about my factors of 4. There are 1, 2, and 4. I think about my factors of 8. There are 1, 2, 4, and 8. Well, amongst those two lists of factors, which number is the biggest number that's the same for both? 4. 4 is the biggest number that I could divide both 4 and 8 by. What's 4 divided by 4? 1. Okay? And what's 8 divided by 4? 2. So the fraction 4 eighths simplifies to 1 half. That's 4 eighths in simplest form. Let's take the next one, 9 fifteenths. Okay? What is the biggest number that I could divide both 9 and 15 by? 3. Okay? So what's 9 divided by 3? Three? 3. And what's 15 divided by 3? 5. So 9 fifteenths in simplest form is 3 fifths. Let's take these next two. 27 over 72. Now these are getting bigger. Right? I have to find a number that's common for both of those, the biggest number possible. So. What is the greatest common factor of 27 and 72? Well, I know what it is. You can take your calculators and figure it out. You can use the prime factorization the way I told you to figure it out. Okay? For the sake of this video lesson, I'm just going to go ahead and straight ahead and tell you, if you don't already know, it is 9. Okay? 27 divided by 9 is 3. 72 divided by 9 is 8. So we're going to divide both parts of the fraction by the same number. And that is... 9. Well, 27 divided by 9 is 3, and 72 divided by 9 is 8. What is 27 over 72 in simplest form? 3 eighths. Okay? Let's take this one. 42 over 63. Take a minute and see if you can think about what the greatest common factor is. There's no one here right now, so I can't say you in the corner, but I'm hoping by now someone's figured out it's 7. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 7. Well, what's 42 divided by 7? 6. And what's 63 divided by 7? 9. Well, but look at that for a second. That doesn't look right. There's something missing here. Is this fraction in simplest form, 6 over 9? No, it's not. It's not in simplest form. I could have divided by a bigger number. So let's go ahead and finish it off because here's what happens. When you write a fraction, when you simplify fractions, you must write them in simplest form, which means that if you stop here at 6 ninths, it's wrong. we got to keep going. So I got here to 6 ninths and I realized, uh oh, I could have done more because I know that I could divide both 6 and 9 by 3. 
So let's do that. Six divided by three is two, and nine divided by three is three. So, 42 over 63 in simplest form is two thirds. I shouldn't have divided by seven. I should have divided by 21, but that's okay. It's a good point. The point is sometimes the numbers are really big and you may not be able to find the greatest common factor. Well, you could start small, but you need to make sure that you finish it off. You need to make sure that you get all the way down to the simplest form that you get to the point where you cannot simplify anymore. Okay? So how do you know when your fraction is already in simplest form? Well, there's a few things you can look for. Number one, if your numerator, your top number is one, then your fraction is already in simplest form. You can't get any smaller than that. Okay? If your bottom number, your denominator is a prime number, your fraction is already in simplest form. You can't get any simpler than that. If your top number, your numerator, is a prime number, like 7, and it is not a factor of the bottom number, then your fraction is already in simplest form. So 7 over 20 is already in simplest form. Because 7 is prime, and 7 is not a factor of 20. Okay. Now that's different if I would have changed it to 7 over 21, okay? If you're thinking 7 over 21, oh wait, 7 is a prime number. That fraction is already in the simplest form. That's wrong. Why? Because even though 7 is a prime number, it is a factor of 21. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So therefore, this, this fraction can be divided more okay and become one-third but generally now erase and I'll give you another example here's another prime number five five over nineteenths is five nineteenths in simplest form yes it is why because five is a prime number and five is not a factor of nineteen five cannot divide evenly into nineteen without getting a remainder so once again what are some clues that you're already in simplest form? Well, if your numerator is 1, your top number, already in simplest form. If your numerator is a prime number and it is not divide, divisible into your bottom number without remainders, then you're already in simplest form. And if your denominator is a prime number, you're already in simplest form. Hope this